But unfortunately, doing things alone is uh, much more difficult on a camp like that. And corruption ended up indeed spreading around the camp. Uh, corruption and problems while I was busy trying to make sure at least we had a stable process to work under. Uh, things were going on in corners where I wasn't that really shouldn't have happened. And I guess the next lesson to learn is don't look for leaders in the Occupy movement. Don't look for leaders on an Occupy camp. Look for people to be inspired by. Look for people who can guide you or teach you how to work the system that's there uh, to participate. But don't look for a leader. So many people there who seem to show up with the best of intentions ended up just looking for someone to follow instead of being a leader. And I wish that's a point I had brought up way early on and that I had pressed a lot more. Unfortunately, I could only pick one issue to work on on that camp, and that wasn't it. The ideal thing to do on an Occupy camp is become a leader, to grow. It's a fertile place for self-growth. And if you weren't challenging yourself, and if you aren't challenging yourself on an Occupy camp, to step up and take responsibility, to make decisions on your own, to start initiatives, then the power goes to the next person. And that's what happened. Too many people gave their power away. And it ended up coming together. All that power ended up falling in the hands of a few people who in the end I don't think had the best intentions. In the end they showed themselves to be sneaky, they showed themselves to be untrustworthy, contradictory, bad decision makers, and as the rumor would have it, probably implanted agents. As crazy as that might sound. As you watch them operate, it became clearer and clearer that they seem to be there with completely different motives than the best intentions of an Occupy movement camp. And that was the real downfall, because there came a point where there was nothing you can do as one person, because there was so much distrust built up from these small lies and these small betrayals, these little uh, inconsistencies from people around you. It just built up to a very suspicious sort of air between people. And when you would see someone who was clearly acting in a corrupt way, if you tried to call them out, they had so much trust from other people that immediately you were the outsider. It had become, agree with our leader, or we must suspect you. And no one thought for themselves, what about the leader? Is that guy acting appropriately? They weren't. There shouldn't even have been leaders. That was completely the opposite of an Occupy camp. So that would be another lesson for an Occupy out there. But it's also a lesson for society. Because in that microcosm, I saw how a society becomes corrupt. It's in the act of releasing your power to others. It's in the act of sitting back and saying, okay, I'll just do what you say. I'm tired of thinking. The second someone does that, corruption begins. Because at first, the people you give your power to might have great intentions. They might be people like me who just want to help the world. Or they might be completely corrupt. But sooner or later, someone will inherit that power who you really would not have given it to in the first place. So it was a great small stage example of how a government gets started and how a government goes sour. It was fascinating, even though it was sad to see it go that sour and end, which it did. It ended. And I walked away. I was not there for the last week because I had seen so many people who I, I had identified as true-hearted, genuine people that were there from the start also, but were slowly starting to drop away. I had noticed this trend uh, about a week before or a week and a half before, and it kept going, and soon, soon enough I was one of the few people there that I knew were there for the right reasons while the camp was going in a completely different direction. There were no more marches. It was all about the camp. It was all about setting the camp up for winter. And somehow this became the issue, the big issue that the camp deals with, is setting up the camp. It became a little bubble. There was no focus on inviting people from the outside to come and join the force. There was no outreach to communities. 
or minority groups that could have easily joined. There was not even a pamphlet made until the last week. That was my last act, is to finally push through the printing of a pamphlet that I had to make myself. And those pamphlets were not handed out. They sat in a box and probably got taken away. I have a small stack in my room which I hold as a memento, but besides that, none left the camp. So it was a wasted opportunity because of complacency, because of giving power to a central government, basically, and allowing people to hold power. The very fact that they were not released this power was proof that they had bad intentions and were not truly of the Occupy movement. Because a real member of the Occupy movement would have said, I don't want this power. No one should have this power. It's between all of us. Take back your power and stand on your legs and let's fight this together. That's the right attitude. So I walked away when I saw that I was pretty much one of the only ones left who had that kind of intention. But I didn't walk away empty-handed. I learned that I can speak. I learned that I have things to say that people care about and that people appreciate. I would have a lot of appreciation after meetings. People would sometimes come up to me and say, I so much appreciate that you said that because I was thinking it and no one was saying it. I was thinking it and no one was saying it. That's the thing that echoes in my head. Anytime I have an idea now or a thought that I don't see expressed out there, how many other people are thinking exactly what I'm thinking, but are afraid to say it? If that's something that I have the capacity to do, to be the guy that says it, so that everyone else could say, hell yeah, I want to say that too, then I'll do it. It's addictive, I guess. And that's a large part of the motivation that brought me here. I have to give a lot of respect to even our failed Occupy camp because I know so many people tried really honestly to make it work. And also, it was the kick in the ass that got me here right now, talking online. I know this is just a humble little podcast, at this moment anyway, but I intend to crank things up on here, slowly but surely. I'm starting off simple, but things are going to get pretty interesting around here. And that comes directly from my experience with Occupy. Yes, it's also based on who I am for my entire life, some personality traits I have that could not ignore this anymore, but the spark that lit the flame that burns inside me right now was Occupy. That was the final spark. And I cannot go back to sitting in my chair and being a pacifist. I can't go back to letting things slide and wait for the next Occupy because Occupy has changed the world and everywhere in the world people like me are in motion in small ways that will cause waves that will grow and that will change big things. Maybe I should make that a prayer. It feels like I just sent out a prayer. <laughs> well, I hope people out there appreciated this. I hope it helps some people either in running a camp or changing their lives. And uh, I'm going to keep shooting these little blips out there into the inter internet space. And hope it falls on your ears and touches your heart. But for now, I am going to get back to work on my little video that I hope you will enjoy immensely. So, back to work I go. And I uh, leave you with the simple thought. How does anything ever change if no one ever changes? You can start right now thinking about changes you can make in your own life, or in your behavior, or in your views, that change the world. People change the world. Individual people change the world the second they decide to change their own world. We're all connected. All our worlds are connected into the one great world. Which means we all have an equal chance to change it. It only takes action. So let's see what action you come up with, and I hope you show me, because I'd love to see it. So until next time.